Okay, now that we know what to do, we need to download and install Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Now, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to choose WAMP Server 2 as the distribution that packages all those programs and installs them on your computer nice and easily. So, I'm going to go to WAMPServer.com, and you can see here's the website. I've also brought up ApacheFriends.org, and if you wanted to use XAMP, you would go here, and then there's a downloads link here at XAMP Beta right here. But I'm going to use WAMP Server, and I'll click on Download, and they give you some options here, and these are important here. If you have a 64-bit system, you're going to want to choose a 64-bit download. If you have a 32-bit system, you could choose a 32-bit. Or, if you have a 64-bit system, you could still choose a 32-bit download. Now, how do you know the difference? Well, if I go to Start, and I right click on computer here on my Windows desktop you can see that my system it tells you right here system type 64-bit operating system so you can see I'm using a 64-bit version so I have two choices here I've got the 64-bit um, right here with a PHP 5.3 you can see that it's Apache version 2.2 there's also another version over here where it's Apache 2.4 and it's PHP 5.4. I'm going to use the slightly older version that's right here and download this. So I'll click here. I get a warning right off the bat that for this to work I need to have a version here of C++ 2010 Service Pack 1 installed on my system. Either x86 which is for a 32-bit system or x64 for a 64-bit system. So depending on what you have, you might need to download this and install this first. Now I'm going to assume that I already have this on my system, so I'm just going to download it directly right here. And I'll wait for the download to start. And I'm going to save the file. And when that's done downloading, we'll proceed with the installation. Now just in case this doesn't install correctly, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go back right now and I'll go back to download and I'll click on this again and I also want to go and take a look at this C++ libraries essentially that you're going to need to download. So I'm going to click on this link 64-bit since that's what I'm running and you can see it takes me to a Microsoft Download Center and it's pretty easy these websites and there's the download link right here so I could download that too and I'm going to download that too just in case that I need it and once again when you download these programs, I recommend saving them instead of just running them automatically. Save them first and then run them later. At least that's the way I like to do things. Okay, the files have done downloading and they downloaded to my downloads folder. So what I did was is I went into the downloads folder and I copied them to my desktop so that you can see them. Let's see here. Alright, there they are. Here's the WAMP server and here's the C++ libraries that I downloaded from Microsoft. So I'm just going to try to install this directly. So I'm just going to double click on it. We'll start with the WAMP server and see if it installs. And I'll hit run. Now if you haven't installed a lot of programs that you think would necessitate having C++ libraries installed on your system, then you might want to go ahead and install this first. But I pretty much know that I think I have these things already. So. I'm going to just install here. Alright, so I'll hit next. And notice where it's going to install. This installation of WAMP server is going to be installed in your C drive in a folder called WAMP. Do you see that? Perfect. Alright. And it says here that the folder WAMP already exists. Would you like to install that folder anyway? I'm going to hit yes. I already have a folder there because of a previous version that I had installed. A good note that when you uninstall WAMP server, of course it left this folder there, so that's what it's seeing. So do I want to install that folder anyway? I'll hit yes. And I will make a um, quick launch icon. I'll accept that. I'll hit next and install. Alright, so it's going to go through the installation procedure and I'll pause the video and come back when it's finished. Okay, during the installation procedure it wants you to choose your default browser and what that means is default web browser so it pops open a window on you and says choose your default web browser like 
Firefox, Internet Explorer, whatever it is. Um, if you just don't know what you're doing, just click Open. Um, uh, I don't mind that it defaults to Explorer, that's fine. I'll click Open and that's fine. Uh, many people, when they are working with the web, some people prefer not to use Internet Explorer and they prefer Firefox. Maybe they feel it works better and stuff like that, which Firefox is great. But if you're going to be a web developer, I recommend that you test out your websites that you're developing on all platforms, meaning Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, Safari, you name it. You probably want to test out your website on all of those web browsers and make sure it looks the way you're hoping that it's going to look. All right, I'll hit next and I'm going to launch the program and hit finish. And when the program launches, it launches in your system tray down here on the right here. Oh, and you probably can't see that. So let me move this so you can see it. It launches into your system tray. Your system tray in the bottom right hand corner of your Windows desktop, you'll see it's green right there. This is the program. If you le left click on it, you can see some um, tools for working with WAMP server. Now if you want to turn it off, what you do is you click on it and I'll say stop all services and this should turn red and if I want to exit out of it, I right click on it and hit exit. So now it's off. Now if I want to run it, I'll go to start programs and you probably can't see this. Let me move this over so you can see this. Start all programs and I'll go to WAMP server and start WAMP server. Alright, and that should fire up the program. Of course it's going to start in your system tray. So there it is, a W right there, green. And if it's green, that means that all of the services started up and you're ready to go. If it's orange, that means only partially some of the services started up and are ready to go. And if it's red, it wasn't able to start at all. So a few of the students in my class invariably have a situation where they install a WAMP server and it's unable to start all the way. And so I want to discuss why that would happen. If you cannot get WAMP server to install correctly and then launch in your system tray and turn green, there could be a bunch of reasons. You probably want to try to uninstall and reinstall the program. You probably want to make sure you turn off your antivirus software. I'd say um, turn off your Windows firewall. And you also want to make sure that you don't have any previous versions of MySQL installed. Um, let's say you have another class that you're taking on um, uh, SQL or, or MySQL and you've installed the server before, you cannot have multiple instances of MySQL running at the same time on your system using the same port number. And so you might say, well, what's that? Well, the port number that it wants to use is 3306 and you will not be able to run multiple instances on that port number. So let's continue though. Let's assume that you've got it installed and that it's working, it's turned green, and you're ready to start working with it. Well, once again, you'll left click on this icon and you can start all the services, stop all the services, and restart them. You can also put this online so other computers on your network, let's say at home or at school or wherever you're at, if you want to see your website from another computer, you'd want to click put online. Then the different services that you have here, you've got Apache, right? It'll show you if the service is you want to stop just Apache by itself but leave the other services like the MySQL server running, you could just stop that. You can restart the service. You can test port 80. So if you click test port 80, it says your port 80 is actually used by server Apache 2.2. So if Apache was not able to start up, maybe there's another web server on your system that's already using port 80 and then you'd have a problem. Maybe you have a previous version of Apache running on your system. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Left click, Apache. If you go right here to httpd.conf, this is the configuration file for the Apache web server. This is a quick jump to the Apache error log and the access log. So a lot of useful things here. Also some stuff about the version of Apache and um, the Apache modules that are being accessed, all kinds of stuff, and an alias to some of the directories. 
All right, now let's go to the PHP. The PHP configuration file is php.ini. There's also quick access to the error log. And if you go to the version, the version that's running, and some of the settings that are on by default. Now I'm going to go over to the MySQL. Once again, service. You can stop the service, just the MySQL server. You can restart it. You can install this as a service. Now, what does that mean? If you install this as a service, that means when you start up your computer, that MySQL server is going to start up when you install it. Um, I don't recommend doing that. When I'm working with these types of websites, I like to know, OK, I'm going to start the WAMP server. I'm going to start the Apache server, the MySQL server, and have those running. But otherwise, I don't want them running in the background if I'm not going to be using them. So let's go back there again. MySQL, the service, right? OK, stop it, restart it. The MySQL console, if you open this up, you have direct access to the MySQL or MySQL console. Now, by default, the user that has the administrative privileges for MySQL, for the MySQL server, is root. And the password that is installed by default when you install WAMP Server 2 is nothing. So all you have to do is hit Enter, and you should receive a MySQL console. You can see here, if I click hitting Enter, I can put direct commands into the MySQL server. I can create databases on the fly. I can create users, all kinds of things right here from this console. So if you're taking a class which is teaching you how to put MySQL commands in directly to a console, this is really useful. All right, and let's see here. Also, I'll go here. The my, my.ini is the configuration file for the MySQL server. The MySQL log file, that's useful, right? And version information. Now, 